didn't really, I was just being so busy. We'll be loud for a second, don't, don't mind it right now. So, so, we know for a fact that Richard, uh, for a fact, he's on nine different chains right now. Uh, I found him with, uh, not, I'm not saying it's him, but you know, it's his wallets that are connected to him. Uh, I only, I've only looked on, I looked on Gnosis chain and uh, Polygon so far. 74 million in Polygon, $138 million got sent to Binance uh, 12 hours ago. Right. So he's making money. He's talking with these protocols. And I believe that he's setting up Binance and getting them ready for the for the meta bridge. Right. That we talked about. But the this crazy thing is, OK, so right now what he's doing, there's four different there's four different types of trading protocols that he's utilizing through Spark Finance. Spark Finance has this thing called Summer Fi. Right. Uh, the Instadap. Um, like the SFI profile itself, and then the EUS, EUSD, SUSD protocol, right? So he's been taking out um, and utilizing the bots, of course, uh, and take, taking them out to make, you know, looks, needs to look human. But literally, uh, they had these, these little instruments that they have. They're literally called BA Labs, Bot Analytics Labs. And the way that they can call it that is because he's trading against himself. There's no traders, because remember I talked about those pools that he opened up and we were trying to like, Oh, he's going to use that for this and this. What he's doing, since one of the one of the sides of the liquidity pool is already full, he's able to go in, add the copies, or add another type of token over there, and then begin trading arbitrage against it. And then, as soon as it hits a certain level, he rebalances it, so he gets paid the rebalance. You know, depending on how much money he puts in there, the bigger the rebalance will be, and then he's able to turn it all back in for the flash loan. Seemingly, from what I found. Uh, over the past couple months, or no, since I think not even uh, literally a month, a little bit more than a month since around the 8th of, um, uh, yeah, around the 8th of last month, uh, March. He's been uh, he's been over there doing this pretty much since he got a hold of Dai and, and, and uh, S Dai, right? So we know that he had 400 million uh, S Dai. And then, you know, he's been kind of going back and forth between that need. And so now he's gotten to the point to where he, like, whenever he's going to do it, he's able to put $800 million in collateral, right? And then he's able to take out $800 million. And he's not, even, he's not even using the 20x leverage yet. I think he is, but in a small pack because it depends on how many bots he's using. But so the point is, like, that, that their debt ceiling, uh, the debt ceiling for MakerDAO, has increased from one billion to two point five billion uh, in over in, in less than the, in, the, in less than like two weeks. So now he's able to take out at least two point five billion in collateral, right? Um, so he's increasing that. They've increased the debt ceiling for that. Um, the other protocols, he's literally he's filled up he's filled up the Maker Dow Vault with three hundred million, and then another one hundred million that has gone into the SUSDE Vault, right? So this is showing in the fact that he's bringing more money over and into the protocols that he's clearly making money and that the money that he's making, we're actually seeing it. And the way that he's doing, again, he's on nine different chains that have the exact same setup as we saw on uh, BSC and the exact same setup that we saw on Ethereum, where that, that he, he wrapped up the chain before the snapshot. He did this to every chain. He wrapped it all up inside of NFTs and inside of tokens. And like, so when he snapped it, so whenever, you know, it looks like a scam, then he goes back over there and he opens it back up. And all of a sudden it's a, it's a V2 pool that he made three and four years ago. But the crazy thing is, right, he's able to send his bots over there and trade literally against no one because the contracts were whitelisted, right? So he's literally able to send the bots up, start trading and arbitraging one side, wait till it gets to 15, 20%. Boom hits the uh, hits the rebalance, and then boom makes you know depending on how big it is. I see you know like you can't really see the trades because he's so smart. It was smart enough to keep the stuff hidden, so the value's hidden, right? So the value doesn't show up, so you can't see the trades. But I've seen the money on Polygon with with just one of the wallets that moved off 74 million yesterday. Today 138 million into Binance, right? That's only two chains, 
and only some of the wallets. And I know that, that clearly I know there's more. I just, you know, don't want to give that people a freak out and headache. But the, at, this, at this rate, from, from what he's from what he's able to achieve, because they've also literally went, die itself went from literally 1 billion, 1.5 billion die to 5 billion die, right? We already know that they're no longer going to be the harbors of die. So if they keep going at this rate, he's going to have 20 billion die by June. And then since they were just released, um, USDT, USD, uh, USDT, and USD, USDC, uh, he's going to have those finished by uh, before what, May, June, uh, around, uh, around August. And that gives him two more months, right, to literally reach parity with all this, with all the uh, the copy tokens. What I believe he's doing is that he's actually putting copy tokens on everyone's chain. Those three main chains are going to have their own copies, just like his. So he's going to be able to put the stables on one end, right? Um, and then literally either single side staking or um, literally have that. And then also fill them up with copies that are at, at low values too. And then they all reach parity together. Or he might have enough money, which this would make sense because he's, he's kind of rolling in it. Because like literally at some point he's making $183 million a year. You know, depending on how he's holding his collateral and things like that. So he can literally get them all to reach parity, all three chains to reach parity, and then the, the trading can go live. And literally by then, when all those things reach parity, pulse chain, <laughs> and that 20, that 20, that 20, that 22 billion that he's sitting on, which would be an S die, would pay him $2.2 billion a year, right? Because he's holding it in S die. <laughs> and that's how the protocol works. So $2.2 billion a year, which was like, I believe you do $2.2 billion divided by, let's just say 10, that's, you know, $200 million a month, roughly. So 100, $183 million a month just on the SDI alone collateral. But he's not just going to hold SDI. Okay. I mean, we, we know one, one second is going to be holding. One second. So, yep. Yep. Uh -huh. Go ahead. So, all right. Let me. So you're talking about not even pegging PDI right oh, now. This is a whole different narrative. Right? No, right this, now. Both. this is um, no, this is peg this is pegging it, this is collateralizing it and pegging it all at the same time. Okay, okay. Let, well I'm I'm very um very new to all this yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. information. Okay. So, 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 okay, okay. so let right, me right, let so me like, let me let me make sure mm -hmm. I'm kinda so you're talking about two different chains and then in those two different chains, I remember yesterday or I listened yes. to the AMA as well um, yes. that you linked. I listened to all of it. And right. you're talking about the snapshots of these chains Correct. within the chains, within the folders. And yes. what you're now, what you're telling me is I don't really, I don't really understand yeah, okay, okay, okay. what does the, 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 the what does, what does those chains have to do with PDI? Well, the thing is that he's able to trade on different chains and kind of spread out the, spread out the actual, well, it has everything to do with he, over there, PDI is a dollar, right? Over on those chains, that exact same contract address is a dollar. And it just gives him more options to take out different loans and spread out the, the, the value of what's going on. Rather than it all being one chain, one action, and one thing, he's got many bots doing lots of actions. Can you, can you, and, and, um, mm -hmm. so what? So when when we took the snapshot of Ethereum, right? That's that's how no, we no, that's created. Not, that's, yeah, yeah, we think. Yeah, but he, but remember, he was all he was always gonna he was always going to copy BSC first. He was always he wanted to correct. Fork BSC. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, so so yes. so he took snapshot. But the thing is, he took snapshots of every single chain, every single one, especially that specific spot, especially like whenever, especially whenever Uniswap went from V two to V three because they no longer use V two pools. <laughs> And a lot of other mm -hmm. dub protocols no longer use V2 pools. So he locked mm -hmm. up his own V2 pools, knowing that he was going to use V2, right? So whenever he opened those mm -hmm. up, he whitelisted the addresses so only he could trade in them. So whenever he went over there on all these chains, the same contract addresses owned by him, only only so, tokens. So what you're talking TF. about is it's the like, like S die pair with the P die mm -hmm. pair in those mm -hmm. pools are being arbed together and he's yeah, trying no, to yeah, make no, S, the yes, p die yes, yes, he's no, trying S to make the p die yes. 
S die right, right. pair. He's trying to bring it back yes. up by arbing it, right? And then yes, he's yes. recollateralizing. What well, with the fees that he's getting, he's using that to recollateralize yes. more money to bring yes. it back, and then to bring it and, up again, and, and, and then it, take it out, correct. and then bring it up again, correct. and take it out. Correct. Correct. And that's okay. on many different so chains. I, but he, but but he also okay. has another. He also has another stable. So he's not having to do die versus die. He's able to do die versus AUSD and A and uh, SUSD versus die. So it's it's another type of token that MakerDAO paid six hundred million die to for them to get involved because they're a great community. of have got Athena, Athena, I believe it's a it's a Bitcoin backed stablecoin. It's a Bitcoin backed solely stablecoin. So it's a it's that it's a unique little you know little bit uniqueness to it. So he's trying to add more stability to the actual. DeFi protocols because he's, they're adding more stables and more communities into it. XDAI too, you know, even though it's DAI, it's still XDAI. It's still a little different, right? So like DAI and SDAI, yes, they are different. But you know, if you're collateralizing them with each other, like you still like if you want, if you have 22 billion, in my opinion, I think that he's going to use you know five billion of this, five billion of that, five billion of this, and he's going to US, USDC. He's going to where, be like, where are we getting die, the 22 billion. billion from? That that that's the total supply right now. Of, of DAI and USDC and USDT on the actual Pulse chain. Okay, so on Pulse chain, right. there's 22 billion worth of DAI yes. right now. Yep. Yes. Yes. They 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 they, they allowed it. They allowed they, the only thing that they inflated. They didn't inflate all the other tokens, right? They only inflated the stuff that was used as collateral, such as ETH, right? That's why ETH was worth was worthless, and uh, and then. For whatever reason, they did not inflate like Link, and they did not inflate anything else but the fucking collateral side of it. Even though it should have been, he didn't. And even if he did, if he did, or if he, oh, he still took the zeros away, so he made it to where it could be easily collateralized. Well, you know, and he could get, he could have over collateralization or an overabundance of the other assets. But the main reason what? why he did it was to was to make sure that Rats ETH could not come onto chain and dump their value. That's why he inflated Rats ETH and the stables, because then the stables would come over at fair value, and then they would dump it on the chain anyway, right? If, if that's what they gotcha. thought was coming. So, and, so and the, the, the inflated goes. the inflated ETH is pulse theoretically, right? Yes, and, yes, yes. But there, but but there is, but and, there is a Rats ETH that that mimics pulse's price. Contract, so yes. like correct, correct. Yep, but that yep. but that one's been inflated so that they can't come and dump. Correct. And absolutely, you're saying the the only other thing that's been inflated, you said, is die. Then is that what no, was? Di no, no, you, being no, USDC. Yeah, that, yeah. No, it, it was it was being minted, but they were minting it. They wanted to mint it to a certain level before they turned it off because they wanted them all to be equal, and they all wanted it to be around twenty million. And that was the FUD narrative in the beginning, right? Correct. Saying that. Yes, yes, yes. You know, oh, it's minting, it's minting, it's minting, it's minting. They figured out how to mint it. It's because they wanted it to mint, and then they waited, and then they turned it off, and then they made it seem like some kind of FUD narrative whenever he handed a, a million dollars for access to MakerDAO. It wasn't for them to turn anything off or on. He paid them a million dollars at that time for access to straight up to control the protocol. Ever since that point, he did. He only oh, took control of the protocol at that time, and then he and like literally that that the the day, the day before that, I think he was literally going in there and he stopped and turned off the maker protocol by going in, by buying up maker tokens, uh, emptying out the vaults, voting. He literally made, did a, did a, did his own DAO vote so he could uh, drop the actual tokens out of the vaults, and then went and stopped the protocol itself. Right, stopped the actual protocol. That and we know that stop. it's the OA or the RH yes, wallets yes, that are in yes, control, yes. right? Yes, yeah, yes, hundred percent. Because he's using his, these wallets that are connected now, and he's using it on on Ethereum and all the all these other chains. Or he's taken his control over his his SDI, which is now how for whatever reason, unless unless he's an admin of the protocol, he wouldn't be able to go on ninety different chains and do this, right? And take out loans and and you know have you know just be able to mint die and then you use certain things as collateral or go in and so out of how is, certain ways. How is all the money that's being minted? Like, is it all mm -hmm. rooted from the sac, um, the yes, sacrifice yes, yes, money yes. of 700 yes. um, 
everything's rooted from there. Yeah. Yes, yes. So so far, so far, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yes, sir. And and the fact okay, that he so did make remember he made money. He made around he made money whenever USDC dipped. He also never touched the actual yeah. pulse chain sacrifice money. He just now touched the the very first pulse chain sacrifice money when he moved sixty million dollars off chain the other day because he literally raised the debt ceiling up so high to where he finally could push it up, you know, to the next level. Because he because now with the he now he could you know, the eight hundred million that he could use. You know, it's not. It's a, he's got it to the point now that he can use all 800 million and more. So now he's like, all right, I mean, let me tap into this. Let me get the 60 million. Let me start. Let me start utilizing that in the pools. And I'm assuming he's going to continue scaling up and scaling up and scaling up because it's literally trading against yourself. Imagine going into a lab, right, and you're sitting in front of a liquidity pool, uh, or you're, you know, in front of a desk, in front of a liquidity pool, and you have your box and you're just like running tests. And literally, there's four different protocols that SparkFi's runs. And like, if you go look at my Twitter, like I'll pull it up. These protocols are literally like the easiest protocols to run. They pretty much run themselves. One of them is called literally relogging, like a relogging, like revamping and rerun, rerunning protocol that they are able to literally just run through it over and over and over again. So, and I, I believe he still hasn't necessarily touched much of the leverage, has it needed to, like the 20X leverage, you know, some, I believe that he has, but you know, he's not quite there yet. You know, I'm sure he will be, but. If you go like, man, just how fast that he's ramped this up is pretty insane. Um, like from, so can you like, can uh, you give like, me like can you tell yep. me like um yep like on five of like so, okay like let let me tell you first let me make sure that yeah, I'm yeah, kind of yeah. at least on yeah, the same company. understanding level okay hundred percent okay so number one he um, he used the sec money and then he deposited it and then he got S die yep. for his real die right yes and, From, yeah and then what yep that's what he, that's what he did at first correct yes but you can't the thing is and the thing is you're not allowed to do that unless you're the actual admin of the protocol you cannot go die he was on the leaderboard and then taken off the leaderboard because you're because they then changed the rules and said no you have to use rap state but now that he's back and he's doing all this lending i'm sure maybe he gets back on the leaderboard but honestly, does he really need to? If if, they, if, they, if he's allowed to do all of this like he needs to, does he really need another to own another protocol? Does he really need an airdrop into Spark? I don't think so. So I don't think what, that's a concern because he doesn't you, need Spark. I understand like the narrative after that, but I don't understand the initial narrative yeah. of why he needs S die. Why couldn't he just use his regular die oh, well, to yeah. do what he's doing? Because because no, well S S die when you when you take when. You, you take it out as collateral, you get sixty-six cents on the dollar. Oh, you, you're you're breaking like out S right there. What would you? Sixty-six what? Sixty-six cents on the dollar. So uh, if you try collateral, I can't hear you. I can't hear you at all, bro. Um, you're you're yeah, you're breaking know, out real hard. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I can I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. So like, it's a, it's, you get you only get sixty-six cents on the dollar whenever you try to collateralize die. Like so, if you try to flash loan die. At a dollar, you only get sixty-six cents per dollar, right? So it's a, it's a, it's like a protection of that, right? So there's no point that he can't do it. So the point best guy is that you can take out it, and you can take leverage out on it, right? That that's that was why SI was created, so you can actually take it dollar to dollar and then also run your front end decentralized, just like MakerDAO did to begin with. But PETA, I like um, um, die itself. I don't. I don't know if you went to a different location or if you went back inside or something. But your your connection is yeah, going in and out. I can't hear you. I can't hear you anymore. Like I, I was yeah, able like, to hear you well earlier. I'm trying, okay, I'm trying to get. That's out. Where am I? Where am I? Okay, let me try to find a good spot. Hey, bang with me. Bang with me. Bang with me. I'm trying to walk a little bit closer <laughs> to the houses, and I was just gonna see if that was better. Hold on. Let me know. Like you, were, you, were, you were good. You were good a few minutes ago. Yeah, you're. I think you're. Yeah, no, you're good I know. Now. I'm right back where I was. Okay, right there you go. Okay. Yeah, I can, yeah, right I can hear you Ooh. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah, so like, so die itself is it's kind of protected in a way because it takes it's a 150 percent collateralized rate. So when you try to take collateral out against die, and it's at a dollar, and try to flash loan it, you only get 66 cents for the dollar. So S die was created so you can actually take a flash loan out against die, and you can actually leverage it all in the same all in the same fell swoop. That's why he can't what? use his regular die. Gotcha. So what is S die? What why is it called S die? Is it Spark die or something? What okay, does yeah. S stand for? 
Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Spark. It's for it's, it's the spark die. It's savings die actually. So whenever you hold S die, you get 10% interest. It started at 15, then it went to 12, and now it's at 10. So even while he's doing all this, he's getting not only is he getting paid for his ETH, that's a, that's a 200,000, 200 million. Um, but he's also getting uh, collateral, you know, as he's holding that S die, he's also getting that at 10%. So he's literally getting paid on both ends uh, while while still doing these and, and, and manipulating and and um, not you know letting the bots do, do their thing, but he's still getting paid does the, on both of them. Gotcha. Does the chain show that he collateralized his die for S die? Does it show it on there? Like, can we see? Is there well, a no, tax see, on there? To okay. Well, I mean, all I, all I can see is the is some of the value moving off chain. There there is some there are, there are some contract calls. I didn't look that deep. All I, all, all I was looking for was things that I mimicked in the past. I was looking for the, the stuff that looked like Blast, the Blast, because it's the Blast contract that, that he's using, because it's that special contract that can take one token and give you one token back, doesn't matter the value. So those are what I was looking for. And then I followed the money on Gnosis and I ran into 74 million. And then I did the same thing on uh, Polygon where I, I ran into 138 million that was sent into Binance. Um, but Binance. I know, but I know he, but, Binance yeah, but I know, the exchange yep. or Binance yes, chain? Yes, Binance. Binance, the, the actual exchange, because he's been he's been actually going in and sending money into Binance, uh, and trade his bots have been trading inside Binance. It's, I've seen him go in there and do it, but it seems like you know we also realize that he's trading and doing things on their chain, and they seemingly seem to have an understanding or a partnership to where they're going to use these this meta chain that should make sense, or he's going in there to trade with the bots to make more money, or it's just a way. For him to extract the value out that in that direction okay so he's using the die to get s die and with the s die he used it to buy the eth at 3800 correct and then he got yeah and then he got more s die because he bought more yes correct there's no way he's that people got, no, yeah yeah correct you're right yep and then now he's using that well so a part of the money he's already used mm -hmm. for all the ETH holdings, Yeah, yeah, it's, right? yeah, it, yeah, it's, 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 it's he's literally collateralized the vault totally full. So he's, well, he wants to leave it there because he's literally, it's literally sitting at a billion. So he's like, you know what, let me go grab some more of my cash. So he went, he went and stay, he grabbed and he moved $60 million off chain. That I mean, wasn't, it was just literally total, total value locked. He moved that off chain and has brought it over to continue to trade and continue to start, you know, probably actually losing lev using leverage and start building up that those funds again to where, and wait, wait, waiting for those debt ceilings to rise again. Because right now he's pretty much, he's, 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 he's got more flaps completely knocked up. They, they're at a billion, they can't raise their debt ceiling yet. Uh, the same thing with uh, with uh, with MakerDAO, there, there's his 2.5. If you think about it, if he has 800 million and he can leverage, you know, 20X, but he can only go up to 2.5 billion, you know, 3x leverage, and then he's there. So now, you know, what What did they vote in? They voted in to bring in, you know, USDC, USDT, and XDAI at 10, 20, and 5, uh, 5 million, which will also be voted in, just as the other ones were every, like, 20, like, within, sometimes within an hour. Like, this one came in, as soon as he got voted, as soon as that 60 million was coming over, and I saw that, I walked over, and literally an hour later, when they put the proposal in, they said, within 48 hours, we're going to see if this vote's going to go through. One hour later, the vote went through that they were going to start using die, uh, X die, from from Gnosis, and then they're they're going to use uh, USDC and USDT starting at these mil, you know, 10 million, 15 million, and five million dollar levels, which would explain the five million, uh, the 60 million, because then he can leave everything either in the collateral, and then he can hold the rest the rest of the stuff in S die, and then he can just swap all this into S die, right? So then he has you know 260 million, which is you know a little obsessive, but he can use he could she could spread that out against different chains on in different areas and you know and seemingly still have enough to you know keep working his way around because i'm sure that the, when the vote happens for them to collateralize it's not just on one chain or one thing it's just it seem it seems to pass on multiple chains multiple levels uh to a certain extent so so um, and, and and so i have two more questions trying to follow absolutely. up on this one so right. another one is then so technically he's leveraging on his die and he bought eth so if his eth price continues to go down then he has to um bring back the die to well he's going to be a he's going to have a, like, what? a he, he, loss, can hold, right? he can hold the die no because he can hold the die and he's been making money he i mean I, 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 he made 200 and something 
million at least so far that, that I've tracked, but I'm sure he's made actually more than that. So, and, and you have to remember that, okay. that ETH, as, a, as, that, as that ETH goes down, as long as he's still holding the S die, he's actually staying in profit. Because as the ETH goes down, theoretically, right, you know, since he's still holding the stable on the other end of it, you know, he, he's actually still making out because he's getting paid interest on both ends. So even if ETH, ETH, ETH would have to drop another, another 20% down, right, for him to actually start really, really hurting or for it to really be a problem or, or a collateralization issue. Right. Why do Why do you think he bought ETH though at those prices? That doesn't make any sense though. Even no, through no, this no, whole yeah, narrative, no, yeah. it's no, no, it, 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 no. It's it, 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 he he did it prematurely because everyone else was doing it, and he thought that that was the rules. He thought that he could get the airdrop by buying with Dai. Like twenty minutes later, they changed the rules on him, and they said no, you cannot buy Dai with to get S Dai. And at that point, he had to sit on his hands and sit on S Dai. Right, and that was no choice. Oh, so and then he say, waited. Say say that again. I like this. Uh, so, so say so, that again. So, so, so why so why I, did I, he start I, buying and why but, what happened? Well, because because everyone started fomoing in. Right, there was other people and other big whales like Rune that all fomoed in with big buys, and he did not. He wanted to get the airdrop. Right, right, and he did not know because the rules were not laid out properly until after. Once they told him that, he literally went and bought the ETH, not out of FOMO. But just, I mean, at that point, he was almost doing them like doing them a favor of pumping, pumping their, like literally pumping their chain. You know, he, he, he could have sat on what he was sitting on, but it would have made no sense because at that point by, you know, getting the ETH the way that it was, it was getting him more S die at the time. Right. So it's just, he, yes, he bought it prematurely, I think, or, you know, by him buying the ETH or, you know, swapping the ETH into the S die, he actually got more S die at that time because ETH eventually, you know, dropped a little bit, you know, so I mean, dropped down to like 3,700. So he still got more S die at the time and then ETH still fell. But yeah, at that time, I believe that he jumped prematurely because the rules were not laid out properly. Within 15, 20 minutes, they said, I mean, he was still on the leaderboard at the time. And then like within 15, 20 minutes, they said, no, you have to use wrap stake ETH or this and that, this and that to be on the leaderboard. And that's whenever I believe that he was taken off the leaderboard. And then at that point, he was like, okay, well, what do I, you know, hold this? And then he thought maybe, you know what, let me catch the ride. You know, let me see if I can catch the ride with it, you know. And he didn't throw all $400 million in. He only threw the $200 million in and left the other $200 million in s die. And so it was still split 50-50 at that point. You know what I mean? He was still sitting. And that's whenever people didn't understand. They thought he threw it all in because they couldn't see the s die still sitting in his wallet, right? So he did that. Just because, just in case, hey, it goes up, you know, or if it goes down, at least at this point, I'm getting more of, you know, getting more ETH, or getting more S die at the time whenever I'm ready to swap back out, or I'm getting, you know, if, if I'm able to catch a little bit of a pump, which he which he did, did catch a little bit of a pump. I didn't watch any more of the action after that. I don't think he sold anything. He held it all and he just waited, and then until it was it was time, and then everything, you know, he's been at that point. The bots were being active and moving things to different chains, and uh, everything had kind of has gone to come to fruition. So like, the my... ETH that he has, the ETH, mm -hmm. the amount of, I, I didn't do the math. So the amount of ETH he has, is it only mm -hmm. $200 million worth? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it, it's right now, right now, it's around, it's at least $460 million and they And another 100, like the 138 that went to Binance. And then the $74 million uh, that is sitting on Gnosis. Has, it hasn't moved yet. Um, and then he took 60 million over. So it's at least 460 million ETH, um, at least. But I think it's more <laughs> because the vault is sitting there full with a billion. You know, um, I'm sure there are him and maybe MakerDAO itself, maybe utilizing this structure at the moment. It's not. It's Spark is not. Um, but it, you know, I believe it's not. You know, not only him, but you know. They kind of know that he's got to get this done by a certain time. It was, you know, this was seemingly not necessarily his plan, but, you know, the bots are, are you know, they're acting a certain way. This is the time to do it. You know, it's just, gotcha. you know, it's, and you know then, what I mean? Like he's, he, he's, and he's so, got court and he's got, he's got court in November. So my, my thing is everything's going to be done by November. He's going to walk into court and be like, what scam? So now i know that part now the next part is the part that you were talking about in the beginning of arbing between the the um the um the liquidity pools to bring it 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Can, yeah, see, and that can yeah, you, yeah, can yeah, you that, elaborate that, yeah. on that a little bit? Yeah, again? yeah, yeah. That's something that Spark itself offers, right? So Spark uh, Finance offers these four different types of uh, BA lab testing, BA labs, something like that, some kind of bot bot analysis lab testing kind of thing. But it, you know, it's just it's just that that alone, right? So he's able to utilize this this structure that they that they've laid out to where he's able to go in and pretty much trade on the pairs. And then I believe this is that this is fucking this is speculation about how he's doing this. I mean, it could be many different ways, right? It could be it could be him uh, literally taking extra copies. Like maybe, in my opinion, I think that he took multiple snapshots and he has multiple copies of the copies that he has on on his chain, right? He's got three copies of those copies, and now he's putting now he could put those copies over here too, right? And then the, 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 another over there. So then he could then he could, then he has the stables that he just made, and that will create an automatic arbitration between those two chains and themselves right because literally they'll have their copies that are low value paired with a dollar stable coin and then the bots you know sitting on the binance exchange and shit are going to see that which is why i believe he's sending money there and they'll be popping right out of that binance exchange to make that arm and then go right back in it's actually a quick quick arbitrage opportunity for you know binance and for them to get their extra pairs why is that important i think the extra pairs is like as a it's a it's a it's a fucking insurance fund for for Binance and CZ and Vitalik, just in case something happens to ETH or something happens to uh, CZ, that they will still have copies within this, within this, if he's able to pull this off, within this quote unquote privacy of EVM, if he pulls it off. But yeah, but there's other ways that he could do it. He could, he could literally just create, create another pair of a token, you know, and just literally it's whitelisted, it seems like. You know, it's just trading. It's just like, yeah. So it's just seems like that since there's a whitelist within the protocol, um, it's just and it's literally there's like there's like a looping system too. Like, like the way that the way that Spark uh, Spark did it, it's, it's it's very interesting, very unique, and it's just a, it seems like a, a way to utilize the art bots just like anyone else would utilize art bots to take advantage of a trade, right? Because they only they only make profitable trades, and then utilizing them in such a way and in like not a safe environment, but they don't trade unless it's a profitable environment, but like in a way to the where they're tested, it's true, and you know they're able to make make money flow around and make and and make ends meet, and then also front run the fiat acquisition that's going to eventually come. So that which is what got us in the bind to begin with was fiat coming in on the chain and adding debt with their with like USDT, right? At first, I didn't think he was going to have anything to do with USDT, but it seems like they're going to at least give them a shot. Or maybe at least use that USDT as collateral because they know it's actually not fractionalized, right? So the other USDT stuff, it seems like he's, he, they stayed away from it. But this one, you know, this the, the one that he has from, or maybe it's the one I don't know if it's one from there or you know where they where it's actually come from. I have no idea, but I would assume it's going to be the, uh, the you know the ones that they that they've created over you know that that ones that are actually a dollar, right? Because that's the ones you want to arb with at at the beginning. Right. And then as and then like MakerDAO itself has minted in literally less than a month, five billion more die into existence. Right. After burning a hundred billion of it. Right. They've minted new die. Um, and I believe that, you know, five billion of that, five billion of USDE, which is from Athena, five billion of uh, USDC, five billion of USDT gets you to 20 billion um, on that backing of die. But that's just die, right? He still has to work on how or how long it might take to get all the way through. I think that's done by June, and then he still has a couple more months, or the other protocols have a couple more months to either to you know to reach their own backing, because you know he's not necessarily in control or have you know in my opinion doesn't need to worry about what um, USDT does. It seems like you know if you have enough collateral for die, take care of die. That's that that's what matters. You know as far as the other if the other ones you know get their collateral, great. If not. And in my opinion, it won't matter. But you know, it seems like if they're able to continue to uh, continue to ramp things up over time, it's like a snowball effect because they literally have yet to you know really reach higher higher levels. The bots seemingly have just started, and I mean, it was almost felt like it was like I, I held an AMA yesterday. Yeah, you know that. And then it was like we heard him tweet. That tweet shot everything to the fucking moon. We freaked out because we're like, dude, it's fine. We fucking knew it. We fucking knew it. He didn't fud it. We knew exactly what he was gonna say. He was, it was more of a, hey guys, look at what the community did kind of thing. And like, he can't, he can't take, he's not gonna take credit. He doesn't, you know, it is the community. That was the community that literally built that thing up 
and the, the Atropa ecosystem. You know what I mean? And this, the same thing with Rabbit DC, like people like yourself that are like uh, buying that. So sentiment is high. I'm getting, I have a lot of AMAs coming up. I have some people, like some, some prominent people that were reaching out to me because of they, because they heard my AMA. Some of them thought it was all bullshit until um, today. Dude, that's awesome, man. So that's gonna, and that ties into the pegging. So technically though, the pegging exactly. of PDI, but technically right. we don't need to, as a community, no. continue to no. buy PDI to no, bring no, no, it no, up no. to You're peg, right? right? You are right. You're it, right. We You're don't... right. You're right. You're right. Yes, sir. You're right. I would buy, I would buy people at BTC. I would, man, I, like what I'm going to be, I'm going to be launching my own protocols, right? And I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing my thing to start protecting and acquiring other particular assets that I think are going to be very valuable on, on, on this chain, you know, later on, like link, um, P rap BTC. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be helping protect Monat money, which is, you know, one of the biggest holders of the P rap BTC. And then I'm going to launch a, I have a setup over there where I'm going to be launching an implementation token of DAI, an implementation token of this, uh, this, this real world asset thing that eats away, that's pretty much acts like a tropa in, in, in my ecosystem. And then I'm, as soon as that one's protected, I'm going to leave them there, launch bots that there's already bots there. I'm going to have tax tokens sitting there too. And then I'm going to leave those there and have the bots trade between the tax tokens, grabbing liquidity, grabbing uh, liquidity pool, uh, liquidity pool tokens, burning them, sending them to me. And then I'm going to be trading liquidity pool tokens together. And then I'm going to go off to the next, uh, the next asset, right? Say it's Ave. And I'm going to set up my bots there. And I'm going to set up my, my, my tokens there. I'm just going to do it all over again. Right. And so I'm going to do my best to, to surround them and do, to try to protect them as everything's going on and then also acquire them for the community, for my community as well. So that's kind of, that's the kind of vision I see. Because I mean, it's going to be volatile, especially with those assets, because people are going to come over, see that they have a shit ton of value and they're going to get dumped on. Now that, that what I believe is that a tropa is going to protect PDI in a way that it's going to be hard to dump. And with 20 billion backing it, by then you are literally, okay, since you think about it, so at, at 1 million in the, in the uh, 1 million was 137 million market cap, right, for, for PDI. So it needs to get to 22 billion to technically reach parity. So it only needs less than $2 billion in liquidity, like no, less than 1 billion in liquidity for it to technically pair. But he's going to put $20 billion in that motherfucker. Right. If, if that's what if that's what, it's, you know, he's going to over over collateralize it in anticipation of these guys coming in and dumping. And that's 20 X over that's over 20 X over collateralized, which would be able to absorb it. But I also believe that the way that a tropa works, like whenever the, the bots themselves are protecting it to stay to the peg or maybe even push it down, maybe even front run. Like if someone tries to buy at a certain amount of liquidity or whatever, it's going to push the price up, down, and then it's going to send them up the uh, up the ladder. If you know how a tropa works, a tropa has this token called, uh, no, PDI has a tropa, well, a tropa and PDI have a token called two. Two is the, is two X the price of PDI. All right. And then on and up, then there's another token. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not called four, but it's like, it's two X the price or eight X the price of two. And then there's another token on top of that. That's 16 X the price of that token. And then all the way up. So if you think about it like a waterfall and you put a bot on each side, and you have the dollar, you have, a, you have a hole in the middle or a waterfall in the middle, and that's the dollar peg is the waterfall. You know, and then 89 cents is the end of, no, not eight, you know, 98 cents is this side of the waterfall, and then 102 is this side of the waterfall. So to keep it from, from technically being hurt or harnessed or attacked, you know, because the things that, you know, the, why they get depegged, first off would be a flash loan, which we already know is a dumb idea, but, you know, maybe while it's on its way up there, they still try to attempt to do it just to try to fucking say, you know, fuck that, you know? Because you get, you know, even though it's 100 percent uh, collateralization rate, doesn't mean they're not going to try to, you know, try to harm it. But these bots, in my opinion, they'll be protecting it against the the whales and the big dumpers. And when a tropa flips on, you literally have to buy through a tropa. And then if you buy too much, or if you're buying too much out of the liquidity pool, it's going to throw you to contract two, which is more slippage. Contract four, which is more slippage. Contract eight, which is more slippage. Contract sixteen, which is even more. And then all the way up the chain to what, you know, you're literally talking really low liquidity absolutely getting decayed diminished returns and i think that that is how a tropa was meant to be made and, and work and that's i didn't i didn't share that in the ama because i'm still not sure we won't know until you know over the next couple of months whenever it's kind of uh whenever it's kind of ramped up again we did see a practice run uh the, the other day whenever they, he, he got everything to pump and they literally got everything to stop right where they where they were at right 
Did you saw you saw that it pumped from a level and went all the way up and then it came back down and it stopped right at the same level that it was just at. I, I believe that that was them making you know pretty much stopping the uh, the bleeding at that point and pretty much technically pegging it and releasing funds from other areas rather than actually coming out of the main asset pool. Uh, that's a, so that's a, so the the pegging aspect of PDI. It can just be done alone with um, Richard uh, whenever he wants to do it. If he if he yes, desires anyway, to see, do it, it'll yep. peg. Well, I, yep. and, I, yeah, and, 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 and I was as, told I, there, there's more than that too. Like there's a, there's more. Uh, this guy, there's another guy that says, you know what? He could take his he could take literally his uh, pulse X and pulse chain and collateralize it 20 X that way if he needed to. So not only, but it doesn't. It, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to use your own assets inside inside that same 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 ecosystem to. To collateralize, I just, it, to me that doesn't make sense. But you know, it was just another. It was another opinion. The guy's name is Nine Iron Capital. I'll drop it in the chat. This guy has anything that I didn't touch on. His theory will convince you alone. Much less my. Much less my theory. His theory will also do more than convince you about what's going on. Yeah. So he. he, he, he yeah. Because Richard is the OA, right? And he has all the hex, and he yep. has all the pulse, and he has all the pulse X, and. So on and right. so forth. So it's just sitting there doing nothing. Well, I mean, anyways. I know. I mean, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Just so he could use that to stabilize, you know, P die, like we're saying, and then yeah, yeah, it, it, so it, the it, next, it, it, yeah, yeah. So the next speculative aspect of this is if P die does peg, then the next thing would be, well, what are we gonna do with the money we now have? Like all the people with. Yeah. Um, yeah. P die. They're gonna. gonna yeah. They're gonna. The, they're the, gonna the now use use that to buy whatever assets they want. And one right. of those assets that it's we would be want. BTC. Why? Why P rep BTC out of all the other ones? It's, why do you think? Because because I know for a fact Richard's going to want the the easiest onboarding tool to the to, to the chain that he knows needs that that shows the compassion and the whatever it is that Bitcoin needs. Now whether they listen to him or not, again. That's their own fault. To happen, I think that's going to be the next move. I think he still has money so, over there. So and how is it possible to peg wrap BTC once it gets to the, same, well, the well, well, real it's, world? It's the same thing. Real world. Same thing. Yep. Yeah, same thing as the wrap BTC on Ethereum. How it pegs. So he's going to have to. Well, well, I don't understand. Well, the ratio, like the, he, the, the, yeah, the, the, the ratio is already there. So as soon as it reaches a dollar, it'll be there. It'll reach its value. But will the liquidity be there? That remains to be seen. We just know that the ratios there, like the ratios been that the ratios have been there. I mean, even when it was like fucking twenty x lower, even when it hit like so at so lower, you could do the math and you could be like, all right, when it's at a dollar, what is BTC at? It was literally the exact same price BTC was at. It was like these bots are finding the ratios. So what's the, like, that? The only the, the one thing that we have to see and have to also take into consideration is that. Everything's paired together and these bots act in a certain way. So dumping too much money and one time into one pool, the bots will fucking eat it alive and move it around to every other pair. So throwing throwing Rick, twenty billion dollars. Yep. Yep. Tell them about the yeah. differences in ratios, how that's the one that's oh, yeah, like talk, yeah, totally like, different. Yeah, no. Yeah, I told you I told them about that. Oh yeah, the actual well, yeah, the values itself. Yeah, there's only hundred and fifty thousand. Bitcoin in, in existence. It's not 21 million. It's only 150 thousand. We're talking a couple zeros difference. So it's going to, in my opinion, not only reach parity but go above parity with when it when it comes to PRAP BTC. Every other token. I mean, if is, it if is, it is goes above value. parity, that would that mm -hmm. wouldn't work then for for That's, bridging, right? Like, well, you'll know. Then he could bridge this shit over for more value. But it, yes, but no, that would that would actually be an arbitrage. That would be a reason for BTC for them to be connected. To make sure that they can maintain that ratio with the real BTC, because then it actually has a you know that makes more sense, right? That's that's why I would think that they would have it. So then they could also onboard more BTC into the chain to use it as collateral to, for other things inside the ecosystem. You know, even though he whether he likes it or not, it's a good it's a good uh, stabilized uh, you know well liquid token that you would want to have on your chain to have it circulating around to use as collateral. Um, and that's just, that's my opinion. And and to have it either back wrap BTC or to also back stable coins and back other things within the ecosystem because it's something from another chain, has another community, has its own value, its own sentiment. So I think that that's why he would do it.
Because I'm thinking as, you know, in my mind, it's like, this is what Richard would do, right? You know, the ETF hits BTC. He's like, fuck that. I'm not, you know, I, I want to get away from there. He goes over to Hex. Then it's the same thing again. And ETF's going over there. And then he's like, you know, SEC's crawling up his ass. So he's like, hey, literally while they're in his back door, knowing that he's probably being watched, you know, that, you know, the bots are just, you know, kind of acting on it, acting on their own will at this point. And then you see seemingly like working with some of the highest and most well-respected protocols from Ethereum, Binance, um, and uh, yeah, you know, from MakerDAO to Binance to Imp. And uh, it's just like, it's just, it's very interesting. It's just, to me, it's kind of, it's a lining out. And I just, I think that he wants to walk in there in November and be like, what scam? We're at XXX. Why, why? Why um, November, and what do you mean by what scam? If he's able to parody, yeah, yeah, does yeah, that yeah. help his case yeah, yeah. or something, or what? What do you mean? Hundred per hundred, hundred percent, because they're suing him. The, the guy that's if you ever read the letter, it's kind of a joke. It's like they're suing his alter egos for for practically being worth nothing. That's what the guy said in the in the letter. I, I the guy I'm suing you because the tokens that I bought are practically worth nothing. That's what's that's literally what it was. Like Chad GTP could have written a better letter. Um, so it's, it's kind of a joke. But yeah, he wants to be able to walk in there and be like, you know, this guy's saying that he got scammed for, you know, for his fucking less than $15,000. You know, it's a money grab for this guy because he gets 10% of whatever the, the fine is. He gets, This guy gets 10% of it. So that's why I believe that he wrote it. And then uh, if it was even him, it could have been a facade the whole time. Might have been Richard setting it all up, you know, just to, just to do it. But it, that, yeah, so he has to be in New York. On in November, um, I put up my old hex OG. One of my friends uh, came in and reminded oh, me. Oh, Richard! He, Richard has to go in November. Yeah, like he I believe physically so. has to be that, there. Really? That, that, that's what I that that's what I was told. I'm not sure, but that, that's what I was told by someone that I believe that uh, I, I had no reason to doubt it. But uh, but I mean, his, because he, he he filed for his case to be dismissed. It's not going to get dismissed. If it doesn't get dismissed, then I think yeah, he does have to show up. But I'm not sure. This is again speculation. I'll, I'll look up this that is, tweet well, I, for you real quick. It's from Nuclear Herbs. He he oh, explains okay. it all really well. He had somebody that was actually in uh, this last hearing, and he he. Uh, um, okay. Thank you so much. He's got it. a really. I'll I'll yeah, look it up. Right. But it's October twenty fourth, I believe, is all the right. actual date. Like it's almost November. You're Eric Wall, right? Yeah, but I didn't know Richard had to physically be there on that date. No, you are Eric Wall. Can you? Who? Who? Who's Eric Wall? No, I'm just messing with you. It was a joke. <laughs> Eric Wall needs to be there as well. <laughs> he probably, probably will be. Him and him and Rich, I think, like, I think it's cool because it's, it's like his, Eric has always played this arc archetype, and then if this, if he once Richard pulls this off, which. He, I have almost, I mean, I, I've grown stronger and stronger in this. I don't know if I've helped manifest this into reality. These guys have been with, been with me over the past week and literally day before, day after, the day during an AMA, like if we come to another, like we find this, like something very unique that's going on that other people have kind of talked about. And then I'm, you know, we're all, you know, other people in my community are explaining about it. And then we're like, holy shit, this is, you know, but, you know, of course, it's always going to be speculation. It's fucking Richard Hart. I'm not going to doubt him. But I mean, when I see that type of money moving around and this, the, the, the level of complexity and the, uh, you know, the level of effort, you know, with, with the leveraging the bots and just technically let the bots are doing all the work. Right. And then, you know, the chain itself is going to run pretty much, you know, autonomously with bots. Um, in my opinion, that's how it's just going to how it's going to work the way 